Hey, what's up guys? Ken here from the Retro Toyscopies channel in Malaysia. Now, there were some huge updates over the weekend uh, in the world of retro toys, thanks to Ramantoy. Ramantoy on their Facebook page posted this image of what appears to be a teaser for the mask shark vehicle. All right? Now, Ramantoy has been making a lot of waves over the past one year with their homage line of 80s Commander's action figures, which is... Uh, you know, basically referencing the Centurions, right? If you remember the Centurions from the 1980s, a lot of us were fans of the property, myself included. The Centurions was a line that pretty much uh, started and ended in the 80s, right? Unlike most of the other retro toy lines that sort of came back, especially in the early 2000s, there was like this huge revival in retro properties. The Centurions, however, wasn't one of them. So it remains something that is very much an 80s product. Um, and Ramatoy actually brought them back in the sense that uh, they weren't exactly called the Centurions. The characters themselves were not given the same names as their character names from the 80s, but they were definitely influenced all right, by the same property. Now, in a recent stream that uh, many of us would have seen uh, between uh, Mega J Retro on his YouTube channel and Ace, from Remontoy and also Jay from Geek Diet Life. You know, Ace from Remontoy did mention during the stream, he hinted at the possibility of perhaps venturing into the worlds of Mask and uh, what I could only assume uh, was Brave Star as well. So uh, the interesting thing about Mask is that uh, this shark vehicle, the vehicle itself did appear in the classic cartoon series, but it was never actually produced in action figure form by the toy company. Canada didn't actually produce a mask shark vehicle. Now the shark is a sleek looking Porsche 928 vehicle that transforms into an attack submarine. Now what's interesting is that as far back as I can remember, maybe about going back 15 years or so, there were units of the shark that were popping up on eBay. And a lot of people actually who were probably misinformed and you know had vague memories of the complete Kenner toy line from back in the day, they thought that this unit was actually an official product because the vehicle, the car did actually appear in the cartoon series. Hence, there was no reason for there not to be a vehicle of it in toy form, right? So uh, a lot of people actually thought that these vehicles that were popping up on eBay and stuff like that were actually official product because a lot of customizers were actually doing really fantastic work uh, replicating everything, even the box art, as you can see here, this is just one of the examples. There's several different customizers that have done work on this, uh, but yeah, they've replicated the box art, everything down to the instruction manuals, the sticker sheets, and the vehicle itself was a pretty good uh, representation for what I've seen from the reviews. There have been several different units that have been produced, but the custom versions were pretty good representations of what was in the cartoon, and they could actually transform. So a lot of people thought that you know, this was actually something that's actually genuine. But uh, the fact of the matter is that these are customs. And if you noticed on eBay over the last couple of years, uh, there have only been a handful of listings that pop up from time to time. And the quantities that were produced, since these are custom products uh, and they're not made by a huge factory or a huge company or anything like that, the quantities were very limited, making this one of the most rarest customs that you could actually have. Now, the Shark Custom is actually legendary among mass collectors. You know, a lot of people who were able to pony up the cash for it and make no mistake, all right? This custom, you know, the listings, the pricing for it is exorbitant, all right? It's, well, probably naturally so because these are pretty much made uh, by hand, you know what I mean? By, uh, you know, a, a select team of people who are working out of a probably just, you know, a garage or something like that. And uh, they don't have access to the huge equipment and things like that that the big companies do. So, you know, this is a painstaking labor of love. The prices, you know, I think from what I've seen, range from anywhere between 200 to 350 USD. So it's like something that you pay for like a Hasbro Pulse item, you know, like, uh, I mean, I don't know how much was the sale barge, but yeah, something along those lines. You know? So it didn't come cheap, but uh, whoever who had their hands on it, who managed to get one of these units, uh, whenever they popped up, I'm sure loved it, right? It was definitely a treasured item, right, in their collection. Now, what's unique about the Shark is that it was operated by Gloria Baker, the mass team's only female agent, right? The only good female agent on the mass team. Uh, and this vehicle was actually supposed to be like a counterpart to the Venom vehicle Manta that was operated by the Venom team's 
only female agents. So like in the entire mass series, there were only like these two female agents. Uh, I suppose in the 80s, that was pretty generous, you know, I mean, to have probably just two female agents. I don't think, uh, well, the Centurions had a female agent, right? Uh, but they didn't have an action figure of her, I think. Anyway, uh, yeah, so, you know, there they were only these two female agents, you know, one for the good guys and one for the bad guys. And um, the both of their vehicles were actually pretty much alike. Now, the Venom vehicle Manta was operated by Vanessa Warfield, and this was actually produced by Kenner in action figure form. This actually made it into the factory processing line, uh, and it's a great vehicle. It's a great toy vehicle. It made the list of my top five mass vehicles of all time. Go check out the video. It's one of my best performing videos after about three or four years. But yeah, this vehicle is fantastic. It's got so many freaking moving parts and you know, it's just one of those vehicles that you know is probably like the best example of what a mass toy could be uh this was actually produced but gloria baker did not get anything like the shark she got something completely different in action figure form she got the lamborghini diablo stiletto now i've also reviewed this particular vehicle uh, on the channel a couple of years back it wasn't a very flattering review uh, because you know the vehicle itself is cool you know lamborghini is always cool but uh, it's part of the split second wave of mass figures where it actually uh, splits apart into two different vehicles and the two things that it splits apart into are pretty dumb right you know it's just pretty dumb to look at uh, and it's just one of those things that just make you scratch your head as to why uh, they didn't just give Gloria Baker the vehicle that she was using in the cartoon series I'm sure there's some videos online that probably explain this in greater detail uh, but you know it just remains a missed opportunity for Canada to just not have that shark vehicle produced officially all right all those years ago but it seems that in the years since then the fans have taken over right the fans have been delivering these customs of the shark and uh, now we come to the point that ramen toy is teasing the fact that they're going to be coming up with their own version of it now so far it seems that the products that ramen toy have been putting out have either been uh, well they've been probably unlicensed uh, and then there's also licensed stuff that they've been doing, like the Silverhawks, right? They've announced the Silverhawks, and I actually pre-ordered the Quicksilver, okay, that they're putting out. And uh, that one just looks great in all the promotional images. So they have Silverhawks as an official license to do action figures for. Uh, but they're also venturing into other toy properties like Centurions, and now, you know, from what they've teased, Mask as well. Uh, which, uh, you know, technically, you know, these products, uh, you know, the franchises are owned by Kenner Parker Toys in the 80s. Kenner doesn't exist anymore. Kenner has been absorbed into uh, Hasbro. But unlike the Centurions, Mask has not exactly been dormant all these years, all right? Uh, it has come back in some form, primarily in the comics, all right? Uh, it has come back in the comics as of you know, five to six years ago, when IDW brought back the mask team in their comic book series and then proceeded to just cross them over with every other Hasbro property. Uh, you know, I mean, I did read those books, you know, okay. Um, and to me, it just seems like uh, they dropped the ball overall in that mass comeback because, you know, they just weren't able to follow through on it. And a big part of the reason was that um, they had the comics and stuff like that, you know, but they weren't able to deliver something like an action figure line, all right? It was something like, it seemed like a no-brainer, all right, for them to just bring back the action figures through their G.I. Joe property, which they already did, you know, because they officially released a Matt Tracker, leader of Mask, all right? They released a Matt Tracker figure as part of the G.I. Joe line all the way back in 2008, leading fans to speculate that Mask was coming back, all right? True G.I. Joe, all right? It seemed like a natural fit. But it never happened, right? It's been like freaking 15 years later and uh, there's just no sign of it, right? So they kind of dropped the ball on that one. But Mask is uh, officially uh, assimilated by the Hasbro group. So uh, in the sense that this product is a bit curious because um, Ramen Toy on their website have uh, given it the codename of Great White. So fans know what they're looking at, right? Fans know that this is a, you know, a homage to the mask shark, all right? Only it can't be something that's official. But it's kind of weird in a way that uh, it's being put out by a company that um, is also doing official product, all right? So it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a unique situation, I suppose. Uh, I, for one, am very excited to see where they're going with all this. 
But I believe that for fans in general, for fans of Mask in general, there should be a sense of you know genuine comfort and excitement, especially when you consider that uh, this could be like the only real chance that uh, many of us could have a shark vehicle, all right? You know, a shark vehicle that is probably going to look you know as amazing as it did in the TV show and it's going to be able to transform exactly the, the way that you're supposed to, uh, we're going to have it in toy form. And it, it's going to be through a way that um, is probably easier than having to go through the eBay route and having to go through, uh, you know, customizers and having to go to what little stocks are available there. Uh, we're going to be able to get it through the hands of a, a company, all right? A company that's able to produce this at volumes that, uh, that are enough for us, all right? <laughs> And uh, I know I'm very interested to find out, you know, where they're going with this. And uh, I want to hear from you guys out there. All right, I want to hear from you guys out there if uh, you guys are really excited about the return of mask. All right, let me know in the comments section, and I'll catch you guys again real soon with more content. Take care out there.